if Caleb Williams goes out and goes ballistic, has a year with over 4,000 passing yards, rookie record, leads yeah. the league in QBR or passer rating, something like that. Can we call him a system quarterback? Because that's exactly what we do to Brock Purdy. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another episode of Caps Off, presented by Better. Yes, good job, saying, right? I don't, dude. I never do the intros. This is fucking weird. Adam's not here with me. Adam is back in New York because he's lame and hates me and doesn't want to be in Miami with me yet at my city. Well, by the way, that's Adam not true. From Miami that's not true at all. Miami. Obviously, I want to be there. I'm not allowed to be there. So I was actually. What do you mean you're not allowed to be there? You could be here if you wanted to be here. No, no, that's not, not true. At all. I have to. I ha I am not. I am trying to avoid getting a divorce, you know, and that's why we're here. You're, you can't get a divorce if you're not married. Same, though, you know? Think about that, though. Think about that. But uh, well, how, how was your wedding? She, how was your she wedding? from here. She would love it. Just tell, her, just tell her, babe, babe, here's the thing. We'll pay rent in New York. We'll live with my parents. She'd probably love that. And then be like, but we can go on, the, go on the boat every weekend. Yeah, well, she has a job, too. I don't know if you forgot about that, but, like, human beings. Dude, fuck the youth of America. Like, honestly, who, she's probably just a, a normal-ass teacher. You don't, you don't need her. Just, they don't need her to teach. They can have they have substitutes. They don't need her to teach, but she sub. needs to teach. She has a job. She has income. That, what, 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 what is this nonsense? This is... You, what, what, I don't understand what you, ignore this, all right? How was your wedding? You had a wedding this PTO, weekend, you left PTO. us. PTO, vacation. How was your wedding? PTO, How right. was your wedding, Jack? It wasn't, it wasn't my wedding, first of all. Uh, it, was, it was fine. It was good. I'm still recovering. Um, Friday weddings are interesting, for sure. It was a Friday uh, I watched wedding? The first, yeah, Friday wedding. What the? Uh, was interesting, but then I mean that meant that I could uh, I got to go to a uh, baseball game on Saturday mm. in San Diego, nice. Echo Park. Very beautiful. No, number nineteen out of thirty. I'm getting up there. Nice. So, yeah, I got this hat. There, actually, new hat. You like it? Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Is it's, it brown? It's a, Is it's a, a brown? priest. It's a friar. Yeah, it's brown. I like brown. It's a friar swinging a baseball it's a bat. It's a good color. You know why it's brown? Because the Padres are brown. Yeah, of course. Color, a Padre. Right? What is a Padre, by the way? It. He's a father, like a priest. Oh, like literally, like a pot, like padre, padre, like a father, priest, but an español. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's not as cool of a name as I thought it would have been. I was hoping like a padre would have been something Dude, exciting. This hat is a fuck. It's a priest or a father, or whatever, swinging a baseball bat. It's sick. Well, good thing I can uh, I can't see it too well. So, all right. Anyway, while I was at the wedding in in California, NFL draft went on, which I paid attention to the first round a lot. Mm. Paid attention to that, you know. Niners got uh, fucking Yak Harlow, Ricky Pearsall, yep, my guy. Yep, congrats. Probably going to become the greatest Niners wide receiver in a long time, um, you know, at least in the last year since because Ronnie Bell sucked, who we got last year. But anyway, I want to uh, – I kind of want to redo. So I had the pre-draft rankings, you know. Yep. Uh, here are my top 10 NFL teams after the NFL draft. Well, it wasn't right? really pre-draft rankings. You put the fucking Bears in there and assume they already had Roman Yeah, so Caleb. it's really – I'm going to be honest. It's probably not going to change much. But, like, let's still do it. I think right? if like, we – yes, you're, you're probably right. Going just back to your Niners take, there's absolutely no way in fucking hell that you needed Ricky Purcell or whatever the hell his name is. Good Pearsall. light, Good light skin, dude. But now your wide receiver trio is he's, pretty uh, – He's pretty, not light skin. He's for sure just, like, white. Oh, he's fully white. Yeah, he's a white guy, I think. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to discuss the semantics wasn't of that. that good of a draft for the think, Caucasians. Cooper DeGene definitely, you know, that was yeah, the Cooper DeGene falling was really bad, really bad for, you know, white boys. Yeah, I mean, like I said it but, earlier, um, and I feel strongly about it, like the NFL might be racist towards white people for not allowing Cooper DeGene. Oh, there's the, – there, all right. <laughs> <laughs> just saying you know what if if cooper Jean gets moved to safety then we can have that conversation why well, i feel like for a corner like he's he's jackie robinson he's breaking the color barrier but they didn't allow him to truly jackie break Rob the color barrier i saw that all week and they're like dude it's like a highlight reel of cooper Jean and people are like our jackie robin which is fucking crazy it, like, dude. i'm just saying like we don't we white people are not athletic in general Adam, we've had white corners before any time before like the 50s every corner was white dude the 50s do you know what was happening in the fucking 50s like no no i wasn't alive when was i i wasn't even a thought my parents weren't even alive i'm just <laughs> it's not the first white corner anyway i want to give you my top 10 nfl teams sure. after the draft sure. all right sure it's gonna be the exact it's same gonna be pretty, it's gonna it's be the gonna exact be... same no, it's not. It's not. It's not. Because teams did stuff. Um, all right. So 
at number 10, I'm going to go with the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, were they nine? Cincinnati. Uh, they were nine. So they moved down a spot. Moved down a spot. And is that uh, is that because right. Trey Hendrickson and T. Higgins have requested out? Is is, is there is there any factor? Uh, it's in, a, that? it's it's due to that a bit. But uh, I'm also they just didn't they didn't do anything that you know. Maybe, Moved your pickle. Yeah, didn't tickle mine whatsoever. Sure. Number eight. Number eight. Cleveland Browns. Okay. Or sorry, number nine. I, they were eight before. Number nine. The Cleveland Browns. Okay. Sure. Yep, because they didn't really do much, but they're still loaded, so it's fine. Okay. Um, number eight, the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, they moved down. So they everyone's moving down. So they, all up. They didn't. They didn't do fuck all. But they got Zeke. Oh, congrats on Zeke Elliott. This is him coming out of Ohio State, right? You gotta say it again. This is this is Zeke coming out of Ohio State, right? Yeah, yeah. Zeke, uh, top ten yeah, pick, yeah. can definitely you know. We haven't seen running backs Dude, get drafted yeah. in the top ten very often, let alone the first round. Uh, congratulations he was explosive in that national championship in 2015. So this is like a really good, it was a good signing for uh, Dallas. Yeah, they're not going to do fuck all until uh, Jerry Jones dies, you know, six feet deep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've said this time and time again: is that the Cowboys are heading for a major fucking rebuild, and I just don't think the Cowboys or even Cowboys fans are prepared for it because you got Dak, who's no, Dak on his last Cowboy- year. What'd you say? I said, but Cowboys fans are like, dude, they're always very optimistic on the year. I don't know what they're going to do when they're like, oh, my God, we're going to be bad. This is the first time I feel like in, in a couple of years, at, at the very least, that Cowboys fans are not optimistic about what's happening. It's nice. It is. It's it's, nice. it's refreshing, which then makes me afraid because I feel like going into every which makes you think season, they're probably going to win the Super Bowl this year somehow because they were actually really fucking good last yeah, year. Yeah, it's weird. I was. Yeah, it's weird. They didn't it's lose anybody. All right, continue anybody. with your list. All right, all right. Uh, so that was number. Did I say that was number eight? Yeah, yeah, you did. It was the Cowboys. Number seven, the Chicago Bears. What? Chicago Bears. Post draft, the Bears are fucking sick. And Tycho, producer Tycho, said it last week when I was giving the pre draft rankings. He was like, "Ah, oh, Bears should be top eight. You know what they are? They're number seven. Wait, Jack, 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 Jack. Hold on, hold on. You made pre draft rankings. You had Caleb Williams and Roma Dunze already baked into that ranking, and you had them at yes. ten. Who else did the Bears yes. add to move them up to seven? You see that punter? You do. The you Iowa do need punter. You do the greatest punter in college football history. This man should have won the fucking Heisman Trophy last year for the Hawkeyes. He's an absolute dog. I will say, so as bad as Iowa's offense was, you need a defense and special teams to make up for it to win like 10 games that they had, sure, right? Sure, you need to flip the If field, you look, at, actually, I'm dead serious. If you look at this punter's highlights, the Bears posted them. It's sick. He's pin, he's pinning dudes within the 10 every fucking time. Fun fact. It's actually disgusting. Fun fact. So, Adam, what is, what is football all about? It's about the battle at the line of scrimmage, right? Uh-huh. And the battle Trenches. of the field position. Yep. You're going to win in the trenches. You're going to win field position with that guy. Sure. I don't give a fuck if, about Caleb Williams, Romo Dunze. What, Tycho, what's the punter's name? Troy Taylor. It's a good that name, by the way. Fucking dog. Good name. Tycho also didn't have to look that up. I just asked Tycho, what's his name? He goes, Troy Taylor. Like, that. <laughs> so you're saying that the Bears moved up, moved from 10 to 7 solely because of Troy Taylor? Because of a punter, yes, cool. correct. Okay. Field position. It's not Adam. Troy Taylor. Ty- Tycho, what's his name? I got to get it right. Tycho, what's his name? What's his name? Ty- Tory Taylor. Taylor? That's... Oh, that doesn't have as good of a ring. Maybe we'll bump down to eight. Yeah, that doesn't do yeah. it. No, but because of Tory Taylor, my rookie of the year uh, in 2024, just watch out. This motherfucker's different. All right. Uh, at number six, we're going to go with the Detroit Lions. I think it's still their division to win. Um, they're they're fucking loaded. Mm-hmm. The Bears, you know what? Tycho, congrats. The Bears will probably still go 0-2 to the Packers this year, but they'll finish ahead of them in the division. Does that make you happy? You know you're going 0 and 2 regardless of. I think we win the the game that we host. I think we split. Wait, you think the Packers and Bears split? I think they split. For the I first, think the Bears and the Packers will split too. I agree with that. How long? Uh, last five seasons. Last so you guys are 0 and 10. No, no, no. We're 0 and 8 currently. Oh, 0 and 8 currently. Okay, congrats. This is the best. I, I agree with that though. I don't hate that. I think the Bears are definitely a team that's going to probably split with the Packers. I could even see them split, dude. The division, yes, the Lions are going to win the division, but the Bears are a team that is seriously going to contend in that division. It, th- there's no de- denying that. Oh yeah, if well, because the thing was, uh, I saw a meme with the Bears and it was like, 
All right, uh, twenty. It was like hang the banner. It was like twenty twenty three off season champions, twenty twenty four off season champions. They're like, all right, hang the banner. It fucking Soldier Field already. But like last year's off season was focused heavily on defense. This one was heavily on offense. And you go get a generational quarterback prospect and a generational punter. Watch out. Okay, seven. So they Watch were at out. seven. He's six big. was the Lions. And honestly, with the line, the Lions, the Lions. By the way, still aren't on this fucking list. Or no, the Lions, sorry. The Packers are not on this fucking list, by the yeah, way. Yeah, neither are the Dolphins, so it's discredited already, but continue. No, the, the, well, what'd you, what'd you guys, you guys got Chop Robinson, sick name. Okay, well, later in this later in this episode, we're going to go through best and worst draft classes, and on, on most people's rankings, the Dolphins were top five, so how about you fuck off, all right? All right, uh, anyway, number five, speaking of that, is the Baltimore Ravens. Okay, sure. They're going to be sick. Who's at six of the Lions? Lions. Yeah, uh, number five, Ravens. Number four, Texans. Like, these don't have to do much with the draft, right? Correct? Um, what, Adam? Continue. What? What's that face? Just continue. continue. Um, continue. All right, and number three. So the three left, right, that will comprise the top three, the Niners, Eagles, and Chiefs. And what, in what order is the question, right? In what order, Jack? In what order? Um, number three is the 49ers. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm as much as I love Ricky Pearsall, Yak Harlow, my guy, like Slicky Ricky. There's, you got a lot of sick nicknames. All right, I just nothing we did really makes me that excited. Like th- th- this draft, we we should have taken Cooper fucking to Gene. We should have taken him in the end of the first round. I don't know why the hell we didn't do that. Um, there's a lot of holes that like I don't know. I just feel like we it, it was a disappointing draft again. But the thing with the Niners is like. I know 100% they're going to have some third to sixth round guy that's going to be sick this year that I don't even know about. Mm. Um, maybe it's that corner from Florida State that we drafted in the third round. I don't I'm know. Just happy that I you trust, put him at, I'm just happy that you didn't put him as one or two. I think. I, well, it's because the Chiefs and Eagles did well. Like So num- number number two, I'm going to have the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Uh, they fucking killed the draft. Again, Howie Roseman is. Best GM is, in football. I don't know. I don't know what the hell that guy's on every single year. He's on his fucking second stint LeBron Cavs bullshit. <laughs> He's crazy. Like, it's actually unstoppable. Every draft, Howie Roseman's different. Uh, Cooper DeGene and that dude, that corner from Toledo are fucking sick. Yeah, like, they addressed their secondary. It felt like the, the, the yeah, Eagles' that's, biggest the, weakness the, was the that reason secondary. The Eagles, yeah, I would say the reason the Eagles were down on my list was because their secondary yep. is pretty bad. Yep. But now you, I think you fixed that because one of those two dudes at least is going to be sick. Again. Uh, and then number one. Kansas State Chiefs, mm. you give Patrick Mahomes, Xavier Worthy, with Rasheed Rice, Isaiah Pacheco, Travis Kelsey, dude, Xavier Worthy, you got you got Tyreek again, 4-2, or, or 4-2 speed, or John and Ross. I know people are going to be like, oh, what happened the last time a guy with that kind of speed got drafted, what was his name, uh, Ross, Justin Ross, John Ross, Ross. John Ross, John Ross, sorry, John Ross from Washington to the Bengals, like, he sucked, he was terrible, but... He didn't play with Patrick fucking Mahomes. Okay, but who is to say Xavier like, Worthy's not John Ross, though, regardless of it being Patrick Mahomes or not? You're just, you could just be a fast boy. You love the fast boys. Yeah, I guess Sky Moore, fast boy, too. Oh, Tycho talking? Can we talk about the pick of the draft? Wait, is that is that connected to your mic? Yeah. Can we Holy talk shit. about the pick of the draft? What? Adam, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. The pick of the draft was Cole Bishop going to the Bills. Who? who? Cole Bishop, the safety from Utah that chased down Caleb Williams. That started the comeback in the 20, what was it? Uh, t- I want to say it was like the 2018 Pac-12 championship. Bro, what are we doing here talking about the 2018 Pac-12 championship? Yeah, what? <laughs> Cole, Cole Bishop will be a household name in the next five years at safety. I, I think, you know, it's going to be a household name for, that the Bills got is Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman already being a household name, by the way. I don't know if you saw those press conferences. Dude, dude's fucking hilarious. He's, He's like he's a natural born yapper. I love. He's that. honest. <laughs> and when he got that jacket, yeah. he was saying he got the jacket from Macy's and everything. A guy that's you know already being Fuck conservative yeah. with his money. Dude, I got these shoes from Nordstrom Rack. What's up? Like, ain't nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. But a f- NFL player oh. going to Macy's and buying every color jacket of puffer for Buffalo is yeah. is very honest. He's one of us. But like, okay, back to uh, Xavier Worthy though. I. I think he was a perfect pick for them. I don't know why the fucking Bills traded them that pick. What's up with that? You know what's funny is we actually put money on Xavier Worthy to be a top 10 pick, and everything I was seeing is that actually the Chiefs ended up reaching for Xavier Worthy. So it goes to show that us as fans 
Don't know what the fuck we're talking we don't know about. Shit. Okay. We just like fast guys. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's my top ten list. Nice, Jack. Congrats. Right now, the, it didn't change the much except not for the Bears it. moving up, which I just don't fucking get. Sure. You don't get the Bears moving up? Because of a punter? Yeah. God damn it. I yeah. hate it here sometimes. I rest my case. I rest my case. I hate if it. If they got a long snap or two, they'd probably be higher. Well, that, that would special make sense. Yeah, special teams, special players. Okay, copy. Nice. Congrats. Yeah. Um, so I was like kind of pissed, obviously, about the Niners draft class. I Through the last couple of days, I've been getting happier because uh, of Ricky Pearsall. You know, Yak. I'm, I'm going to make it a thing, Yak Harlow. When, when he gets his first touchdown, Yak Harlow. Um, but I want to know, like, Adam, what's, what's the most disappointing draft class of your lifetime for the Dolphins? Dude. I got a few off the top of my head for the Niners. There's a couple horrific picks. It's funny because I feel like when it comes like, down to the draft, like we, we hype ourselves up and attach ourselves to certain players that we don't know shit about. We, they just have some decent college tape, and we want them to be drafted. But when it was 2017, last year, last year and the you Dolphins wanted, uh, drafted Charles Harris as their defensive fucking end, the guy that's going to come off the edge out of MIZ. Z-O-U. It, I, I, I've never been sold more on a guy than the, when Mel Kuyper was talking about Charles Harris at the 22nd pick. Like, to me, fuck, like, oh, my God. 2017 Miami Dolphins draft class was by far the worst. You had Charles Harris. You had Raquan McMillan, Ohio State. You had uh, Cordell Tankersley or some shit, some other corner. We, it just, <laughs> I have no idea. None of these doing. guys panned out. We had a defensive tackle, Devon Gotcha, who ended up, I believe, going to the Patriots. And I actually think he just got a deal, so congrats, congrats on him, by the way. But these Dolphins, the Dolphins 2017 draft class was fucking abysmal, and it's gotten better over the last couple of years. But that 2017 draft class, just not a single fucking name Dude. is ever remembered. I'm curious to you. What about you Dude. with the Niners? What was your worst draft class? I'll say you – uh, like I don't, I'm not even gonna go draft class wise because the Niners like tend to hit on later picks than these. But like the worst fucking pick of my entire life as a 49ers fan was when uh, we so we had the number two overall pick right, and we trade with the Chicago Bears. They wanted to go up to number two to draft you know legend Mitch Trubisky, and as soon as that happens, we go down to three. I so our starting quarterback the Niners at this point is Brian Hoyer. Hey, I'm like holy fuck, Michigan State like, legend. Michigan State legend, you know him. Um, but I was like, dude, all right, I, we need a quarterback this draft. Fuck, the the Bears are gonna go draft Deshaun Watson. That was that draft. I'm like, Honestly. damn, that's who I really wanted. The, then they draft Mitch, and I'm going crazy. I'm sitting at fucking Willie's in Columbia, Missouri, going nuts. I'm having, I'm about to have one of the greatest times of my life because we're gonna get Deshaun Watson, mm. this dog out of Clemson, and we get Solomon fucking Thomas. Solomon Thomas. Hey, Stanford he legend. Sucks. Stanford legend. No, he's terrible. He, Dude, at the third overall pick, we picked a deep fucking tackle when we have Brian Hoyer as our quarterback. Could you imagine? Could you imagine because if they would have fucking drafted a quarterback? If we drafted Deshaun Watson on the field, my life would be so much my on the field. Well, I don't know. It could still be fine off as well. Like, but like, my life would be so much better because instead of that year, if we traded for Jimmy G midseason, mm. we could have just had Deshaun the whole time. Mm. The whole time, he'd still be there, probably. A better human, um, I would say, potentially. I mean, Deshaun um, Watson on that Niners team would have probably stayed, been able to stay out of some trouble. So, if Deshaun Watson, yeah, but if Deshaun Watson was on the 49ers, if we draft him, we probably have two to three Super Bowls right now, at least. That I agree with. That I definitely agree with. Like, because that Texans yeah. team, so people, the fact that we drafted Solomon Thomas dude, over him, people forget that that Texans team, like, if if Deshaun Watson and that Texans team doesn't blow a fucking three touchdown lead in Kansas City, I don't think this legend of Patrick Mahomes is where he is today with without that that loss. Well, yeah, the twenty four point. Anyway, I don't want to. Tycho, what was it? I actually want to see uh, producer Tycho because he's a Bears fan. Like, what's the worst draft? Like, worst player you guys have drafted or like worst draft class? I mean, is it not? It's, is it not Mitch Trubisky? It's, be it's got. Like, it, how it, might did be, go? it might be Mitch, but there's also a lot. I feel like the Bears consistently well, like fuck Mitch, up their but draft you're, classes. You're a Mitch defender. I am a Mitch defender, and I'll stand by that. So you think Mitch Trubisky was still the right pick? If we had to redraft the 2017 draft class, I'm still taking Mitch Trubisky. We were still 12 Over and to four. Sean? Yeah, over to Sean. Over Mahomes. Okay, obviously like, Mahomes was <laughs> never the pick. It was never it was never Patrick Mahomes yeah, coming out of college. It was always Mitch or Deshaun. Correct. And the fact that we went with Deshaun or we went with Mitch over Deshaun hurt my heart that night. But it's like he loves kissing titties. That's my guy through and through. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna stay with Mitch Trubisky. Good point about 
titties. Okay. Um, Somehow it was brought to titties. No, did you have you seen that tweet? No, I have not. I love it's Mitch Trubisky's tweet, his famous tweet, where he says, "I love kissing titties." You've never seen that? That's crazy. That that's 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 insane. You've never seen that, Adam? Like, yeah. Okay. It's like one of the most famous NFL player tweets of all time. Then of probably. course I've like, seen it. Of course. Like besides the whole AB run right now, hashtag CTSPN. <laughs> um, wait, Adam. So. After, I, I want to say like after the draft, Warren Sharp released mm. his best draft classes for 2024. Do you have the list up? I have the list up. up and, I can uh, go through the list definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm Warren Sharp, big analytics stat boy. Super smart. Uh, Way smarter than yeah, us. He's smart as shit. I don't know shit. I was drunk at a wedding all weekend, so I didn't pay attention to rounds two through seven. Well, I like Warren Besides Sharp. I like Warren Sharp. So he did. Warren Sharp put together his most and least valuable draft classes, right? So it's not necessarily because we don't know how these players valuable. are going to pan out. What'd you say? Oh, it's a value. It's value. So Warren Sharp's oh. rankings is based off of reaching and people, you know, certain players that were taken at value. And so that's kind of how it's factored in based off of a big board, right? The national big board that most people end up using. So the most valuable 2024 draft class is based off of Warren Sharp's, you know, reaching and value is number one, the Detroit Lions, actually. Detroit Lions uh, allegedly had the best draft class because they got guys at value, they found people that they needed, and they didn't reach too much, you know? So that's a big one. Well, I know the Niners are in the very bottom if it's talking about reaching. Say it again. Uh, where are the Niners just by chance? Because we reached like a motherfucker. Yeah, you're not going to be happy. The San Francisco 49ers came in at number 28. That's better than I expected. So, uh, I number expected. two, hey, number two, none coming. other than um, the Miami Dolphins. You're the only one clapping. Huh? You're the only one clapping, by the way. Well, they were number two. What do you mean? They got they had an incredibly valuable draft class. There's nothing wrong with that. And number three, the Chiefs, right? Xavier Worthy, they got some other guys. Yep, yep, number yep. four How about those were the Steelers. And number five to round out that top five were the Eagles. Okay. Okay. You know, it's funny because I've seen a lot of people say that the Steelers like won the draft or the best draft. I so I had to like catch up. So I was looking at it like today in the car on my way, like while I was waiting for gas to fill up today. I was like, all right, let's look at that Steelers class. And I was like, it is the most boring draft class I've ever seen. Yeah, but they got they got no they got two offensive it. linemen that they needed. Troy Fontenu was like a guy who was expected at 18 good. and it says he was taking that 20. Guy that's a little of. value. But he's the only guy I heard of. And then it's like they had what South some South Dakota State linemen? Uh Zach Frazier. Like Sure. But I don't know. I saw the draft. Roman For Wilson. Me, Isn't Roman Wilson, Wilson the Michigan? What? Roman Wilson. Where did Roman Wilson go? No, that yeah, Michigan. Michigan. Was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they had a caption that said "Our Roman Empire," which is a good caption. That's pretty good. Uh, That's pretty good. But it's, he was okay. Like he's fine. I don't know. Didn't didn't do a lot for me. But they'll still be a good team this year. But yeah, let me continue. I want to go six through ten. But six was the Saints. Okay. Seven were the Ravens. Eight actually Dude. the Broncos. Wait, can I touch on the Saints for a sec? The Saints for like a just a sec. Go for it. I actually kind of like Spencer Rattler going there. Why? I just, I just feel like Derek Carr kind of fucking sucks. So if I'm spe- like I'm saying, if I'm oh, Spencer Rattler, Spencer Rattler, of course, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, if I'm Spencer Rattler, that's a great place to be. You got you got some young talent there. You got Kamara. Derek Carr kind of fucking sucks. Yeah, no, I, I get that. So it's kind of fun, and they already like have packages in place for a mobile dude like Taysom Hill. So it's like kind of kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah. I want to see Spencer Rattler do well. I feel like he could could be one of those quarterbacks that like apparently people stayed away from him because of the whole QB one shit where he's a tool. Um, but I don't give I don't a shit. Know. Spencer Rattler, I feel like this was two years ago. Was the number one pick overall. Yeah, yeah. Now he's what fourth, third round, whatever. And then rounding it out, where obviously the the Broncos were eight with Bo Nix, nine Minnesota Vikings, and ten were the Rams. So based off of Warren Sharp's uh, intelligence and analytics that was the 10 best draft classes from this year they really the broncos are there with knicks they reached for Knicks. yeah i don't I personally don't fully understand it but that's why we're not the smart ones you know no I'm, I'm sure he's like looking at like rounds five through seven where there's not a guy that we can name right adam like, you want to hear the bottom five though you want to hear the teams with the least valuable uh 2024 draft 
Sure, who Niners, had the, Who do you think had the, besides the Niners, who do you think had the worst draft? Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. The Al- Penix at eight overall was crazy. Not even that, but only two picks, according to Warren Sharp, were considered valuable. Every other pick that they had was considered a reach. Dude, the, the funniest thing ever was seeing their GM try to explain to their owner, like, yeah, that was funny. like why? Because you can tell, like, Art came in there. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? We just paid 100 mil for Kirk. He's like, listen, see, it's like the hand motions. That's like, you know, when you're trying to explain something to someone where they, like, don't get it. And you're like, I, I, you have to use your hands. That's what it was for me. I was like, dude, this guy is in deep shit. Well, it's funny because, like, Michael Penix, like, we, we all freaked out in terms of them reaching at number eight. But there were five more players, according to Warren Sharp, who were significantly larger reaches than Michael Penix. And so that just should show kind of the direction that the Falcons were going in is that their big board, their draft board, was clearly vastly different than the 31 other NFL teams. The Falcons and Terry Fontenot, it it just feels like you're being put in a situation where, as a GM, you're not going to last very long with that type of draft class. Yeah, but at least you got Bijan and, like, Kyle Pitts. Dude. I saw, did you see Nick Wright's take by any chance on the Falcons? No. Nick Wright said, which I think is so spot on, that the Falcons' direction is just hedging on both not being too terrible and then just being decent. So essentially by drafting Michael Penix, you're put in a position where like, all right, you're not, he's not going to help you today, but you could always kind of blame him as like the scapegoat or something like where we, if, even if we're a good team. Where we 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 didn't we're not going to go for a Super Bowl is kind of what he was saying, right? Because uh, at number eight you can get an instant impact player. You could have probably picked a wide receiver. You could have got a Romo Dunze. Instead, you roll out Darnell Dude, Mooney. If they if they got a Romo Dunze, they could immediately become one of the better offenses on paper in the exactly. NFL. Exactly. So like, I, I like Nick Wright's take. He was saying that the the Falcons basically just hedged to go in a direction where they're not too shitty, but then they're not too fucking good, and they're not going for a Super yeah. Bowl. Tycho wants to say something. What you got? My, my only thing is, like, I feel like that Nick Wright take is, like, not that bold of a statement. Like, they trusted Matt Ryan for all those years. Matt Ryan's a great quarterback, but, like, they were never trying to make these splash moves. They got lucky with Julio Jones. They had Roddy White forever. Like, they drafted Tevin Coleman. They got Steven Jackson, like, after the fact, kind of. Right. You know, what, like, what I'm saying is, like, I feel like that is what the Fal- – that's the Falcons' role in the league is to be a mediocre team. Like, Ooh, I would say, like, slightly above average team. Like not mediocre. Mediocre is real. I mean, the Falcons have the, the Falcons have gone to a fucking Super Bowl. So regardless of being a mediocre team and regardless of blowing a twenty eight to three lead, they've Wait, gone to more Super Bowls in the last no, twenty years no, than both of actually, our franchises combined. So I don't necessarily consider them a team that is just both of mediocre. our franchises. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. No, no, no. Tyco and I. Tyco and I. Of course, Tyco and I. Uh, well, I think out of the three of us, there's only one person here whose team hasn't been to a Super Bowl in their life, right? Yep, that's correct. Oh, oh, the Bears have been to one. Yeah, they the have. Niners have lost three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we got ran out the building after Devin Hester returned. Yeah, that's true. Oh, 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 wait, or whatever. I forgot about that. Nope, yeah, fully so forgot about that. Talk, Adam. How about that? Yeah, all right. Fully forgot about that. Yeah. Wait, after the Falcons. Wait, just rip, rip, uh, rip off the bottom five. Hell, so the bottom five. The bottom five. Now that I have to pull it back up. The bottom five was uh, the worst was the Falcons. The second worst was the Jags. The third worst were the Cardinals. The fourth were the Patriots, and the fifth were the Niners. Dude, can we talk about the Jags and how horrific they are at drafting? Is like besides the besides the given easiest first pick of all time with Trevor Lawrence, they've been awful. Well, is, how much longer is Doug Peterson going to last? If the char- if the Jaguars don't win the division this year in the AFC South, does Doug Peterson get fired? Dude, the fact okay, the fact that they're not a given to win that division is absolute. It's fucking ridiculous. But the, but the AFC South has just they gotten better. That's not not necessarily on Doug Peterson. No, but like if they if they if they hit in the draft, if they went and did the right thing. and got Aiden Hutchinson over Tavon Walker. We all knew Aiden Hutchinson. That's was true. Be better. That's true. That is so true. Like if they went and got Aiden Hutchinson instead, that's a totally different team already. Like, it is. I, I don't know, dude. I I feel like we have to talk about like the Jags. Besides ha- having that one pick with Trevor Lawrence, where I'm kind of out on Trevor, low key, but like that was I a can't. given first overall. Besides him, they've been horrible at drafting. Well, I, we're not even going to touch touch on it, but I think we should. It's like the Patriots. The Patriots had the fourth least valuable draft out of anyone and we were talking about this off the pod talking about how you believe that this draft potentially set the Patriots back a decade you want to go into that yeah I can talk about that yeah like this this offseason set the Patriots back a decade 
because what they should have done, and because now obviously you know hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I'm the Patriots and you're trying to rebuild and rebuild quick, but still it's a rebuilding process, right? It's all right. Do we want to draft a quarterback or do we want to sign or trade for all these guys that are available? Yeah. There's a lot of dudes that are available. There's a Kirk. You get a Justin Fields. Whatever it is, I think what they should have done is trade for a Justin Fields. He's still young, right? He's got time to develop, but you, you'll have to pay him. But it's fine. You'd rather pay him than Mac Jones, correct? Sure. So we're we're gonna go in and do that. And then the third pick, how about we get that quarterback a weapon, one of the best weapons to come out in Marvin Harrison? Mm -hmm. I don't understand what the Patriots are doing. And I know Drake May. People said last year he could have been the first overall pick if he came out then. But the thing, like, I just feel like you're settling so much by taking a quarterback at three for a team that has literally no talent around him. It's actually insane. You're setting up Drake May to fail. I cannot agree and more. And when he fails, that's going to set you back five more years. Then you got to get another quarterback. And if he doesn't, that sets you back another five. So it's like... I think Drake May is going to fail because they haven't set him up with people around him. If, at the very least, you trade for Justin Fields and then you get a Marvin Harrison Jr. in the draft as the Patriots, then you actually have, like, something you're building towards. Like, where here, it's just, let's pick the quarterback and see what the fuck happens. Like The issue in New England was never Matt Jones. And I hate Matt Jones more than anything. But agree, what, has, what have we seen in the past to tell you that Drake May is going to have success? And what have we seen just out of any quarterback? Like, I've always been a believer that if you draft a quarterback with the top three pick, or even a top five pick, and you have no weapons, you, you are setting them up for right. failure. It is a waste of a draft pick if you don't build the infrastructure, okay? Today's NFL, yes, you're going to draft a quarterback, but even a Jaden Daniels who's going to Washington is coming into a fantastic system. At least he's got – dude, he's got some He's got some receivers He's there. got weapons. So well, the Patriots, I could not agree more. The Patriots are like setting themselves sick. back. 10 years, yeah. man, at least five years by drafting Drake May, who is not going to have any Dude. success. They have no fucking weapons. You, and, and I agree with you. You could have got it. You could have kept Matt Jones. You could have traded for Justin Fields. You could have also traded back and taken one of a doomsday, Malik Davis, or Marvin Harrison. Like, you had your pick of the fucking litter, and you guys sold the Patriots, which it feels great because as a Dolphins fan, they just – they've always had the success. So fuck them, and they deserve this. But, yes, the Patriots set themselves yeah. back a decade by drafting Drake May, and I could not, I could not agree and more with everything you said. And, and Drake May could end up being great, right? But I feel no, like it's no, he's not. a lot of time. I don't think he will be because if you see what he's surrounded with right now, a bad offensive line and horrific weapons, probably this is probably the worst situation any quarterback has gone to out of the draft in recent memory. Like, the Darnold team was really bad, that Jets team. But, like, there's been some god-awful fucking teams and weapons and, like, personnel – this has got to be one of the worst situations if you're Drake May. I would be pissed. Joe Alt was a better pick. Any other player was a better pick than Drake May at three. Not because of what Drake May can't do. It's what he's going to have to do with what they it's, have. It's the worst It's the worst pick, Not and it's not because of Drake May at all. It could have been any quarterback there. It's a bad pick. That I, like, Yes, I, I totally agree with that. I, and I just said it. Drafting a quarterback with nothing else, with no one else on the team, is the stupidest fucking thing to do. I don't believe it. I get it. You yeah. keep taking swings. You need to have a quarterback. But if you draft a fucking quarterback with a top five pick and you have nothing you can, there, you're wasting that pick you can, and you're wasting you those the years. Chicago Bears, like, literally look at what the Chicago Bears just did. They gave Caleb Williams the best system we've ever seen a rookie probably go into, a rookie quarterback go into. It's actually crazy. If he does not succeed – everyone's going to be shocked. If Drake May does not succeed, everyone's going to be like, that kind of makes sense. Well, look you know what you know? just said. It sent them back a decade. It sent them back five years. Look at the Mitch Trubisky look situation. At, look at Jay, it took how many years Hurts. for the Bears to get put back in a position to have a good team? Yeah. I mean, not that actually hasn't taken that long. Because, you know, it's cheaper to build up everything around a quarterback than the quarterback. You want a quarterback on a rookie deal. So if we know that that's the case, yeah. by the time that Drake May gets to that second contract, that might be where the Patriots are good. So it's... Yeah, but then you're kind of fucked, right? It's like, all right, but I brought up the Bears. I brought this up to you off camera, and I uh, feel pretty passionately about this, so let me sit up for a second. Mm. Like, Caleb Williams is a system quarterback already. And I'm going to say that, and I'm going to say that because... Have we, if we look at all the weapons that the Bears have given Caleb Williams already, right? You said they have the best wide receiver trio, in the, wide receiver trio in the league, right? Uh huh. With Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze, and DJ Moore. Yes. Best wide receiver trio in the league. You gave him DeAndre Swift, a good running back to pair with the other guys that they've had the last couple of years. If Caleb Williams goes out and goes fucking crazy, goes ballistic, 
has a year with over 4,000 passing yards, you know, almost like 30 touchdowns, something like Rookie that. Rookie record, Leads yeah. The league in QBR or passer rating, something like that, right? Can we call him a system quarterback? Because that's exactly what we do to Brock Purdy. The difference between the two is that Brock Purdy was the last pick in the draft and Caleb Williams is the first. And I guarantee you when Caleb Williams goes absolutely bananas, we're going to be sucking him off. We're going to be making, making it seem like he's the greatest quarterback prospect. Oh, my God, this guy's so fucking good. Like, he is a generational. He's changing the game. All this shit. But we gave him the best situation we've ever seen a rookie go into. Meanwhile, Brock with all his weapons and Joe Burrow with all his weapons, mostly Brock. Uh, let's stick to Brock. I'm not going to bring up Joe Burrow. Let me talk. Adam. Um, I know you got your hand up patiently. But meanwhile, everyone and their fucking mom, when Brock Purdy puts up an MVP stat-like season, they want to just say, oh, it's the system. It's the players around him. It's all this, this, that. All right. If you're gonna keep it that, cons if you're gonna say that because of all the talent around him, you better fucking say it for Caleb Williams too, because if, if not, that's bullshit, and you're picking and choosing, and it only depends on where they were drafted. That is the only difference. Yes, that is the of only course it is. People will call Brock a system. No, that but that's why does it fucking matter where you get drafted? Because at some point, Tom Brady was not the system, right? Tom Brady was drafted in the last round of the draft. It's, it's what the expectation is. And so when you get drafted with the top 10 pick, your expectations are far higher versus Brock Purdy comes into the league with zero expectations. I agree with you. Bullshit. By the way, by the way, don't it's keep the bullshit. messenger. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I know. Okay. I thought I didn't think you were. I don't agree. I, I, and I, the reason I, I'll I, tell I, you, I, because wait, before you go into it, can I ask you a question? If CJ Stroud has success this year, can we pin that also on him? Yes, absolutely. Like, because I think that every quarterback in the NFL, in order to have success, is a system quarterback, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can be part of the yep. system. Yep. You can be, you can benefit from the system, but without any sort of system, right? We're just talking about Drake and the Patriots. If there's no system at all, how can you expect success? Any quarterback even, even needs Patrick a system Mahomes to thrive. Came into the league, and I, I will say this: even Patrick Mahomes, as talented as he is, maybe Andy the best Reed. quarterback we've ever seen, and yeah. Patrick Mahomes, when he came into the league, was a system quarterback for a little bit, right? And that's fine. He came and he learned from Alex Smith, who's one of the greatest game managers we've seen, right, in terms of game manager-wise. He had Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Andy Reid, like all these guys to help him succeed. And he's he's molded from – he's turned into basically being a game manager at, – at, or not game manager, sorry, a system quarterback at the start. And now he's arguably the greatest quarterback we've ever seen because you bring him into a system like that. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think – Brock Purdy, his entire career, will always be labeled as a system quarterback because of where he was drafted. And I just think that that makes me angry. I fucking hate that. Okay. I also just want to throw it out there. I want to throw it out there really quick, and then I'll let you guys continue. But, like, I think Brock Purdy, the difference between him and the situation that he was drafted into versus Caleb Williams is there have been quarterbacks that are not that great in other systems that have performed in Kyle Shanahan offenses. Whereas you've seen Justin Fields, a guy that a lot of people believe does have, like, not maybe MVP caliber status because he's not that guy. I'm like, I'm just a Bears fan. I'm a little delusional. But he could be a good quarterback somewhere yeah. else where I think Caleb Williams is going to come in and break the Eberflu system, and that is going to, like, surpass him from this, this label. But, like, also you guys didn't give Justin Fields the amount of talent around him that Caleb Williams has right now. You guys went out and got Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze. By the way, if Justin Fields was in Chicago with Keenan Allen, Romo Dunze, DJ Moore as well, DeAndre Swift, Cole Komet, like if he had the same exact weapons as, as Caleb Williams, we're talking about a very similar season, if not even better because of the rushing upside. And I'll, and I'll, I'll guarantee you, like this is me bringing it back to Brock, whatever, let me do it. Um, if Brock Purdy goes to the Bears and is in that system this year, I guarantee you puts up very similar numbers to what Caleb Williams is going to. Or better. I guarantee you. No. Because that actually is probably that's probably just as much just as much talent around him as there is around around. Yeah, Brock. but Caleb has more talent than Brock, and therefore I believe he's going to elevate those players you, you more say, than Brock you could. Say, you say that though. You say that. I don't necessarily believe that. I think people There's nothing wrong with that. that Caleb, Caleb no, you say that Caleb has more talent than Brock, but Brock was drafted last in the draft. Caleb is first, and he's a generational dude. But Brock Purdy the last two years. As I'm saying, like, if you put him right now, Brock has learned and grown and developed, and now he's talented as fuck. You know what I mean? But he's also benefiting he's from the system. Like, we're, we're, I don't understand. He's, so he, will Caleb Williams. So will Caleb Williams. I agree with that, but there's no denying that Caleb Williams is a more talented quarterback than Brock Purdy. Just There's nothing wrong with saying that just because you're a Niners and a Brock guy. Uh, no, but, like, the layered throws. You see Watch. Ready for this? Right, watch how easy this is. Caleb Williams has more talent than Tua. 
Said it. Oh, yeah, Tua sucks. We know that. It's not that hard. It ain't that hard to say that. But I agree. Caleb oh, Williams, like, if Caleb like, Williams Rock, has success, Rock, Rock there's nothing wrong with labeling him as a sucks. system guy because he's going to be born into an amazing system. And if he has success, who gives a fuck? But I'm just saying, if we're if – we're, all right, to wrap it up, in, con- in conclusion, to conclude my essay, um, to conclude my deep-throating of Mr. Purdy. Throttle talking. If we are t- if we are saying that Brock Purdy is a system quarterback based off the weapons and everyone around him that helps him cons- that helps him succeed, let's do it with Caleb Williams. And I know nobody will, but logically that would make sense. So thank you. Sure. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk, Jack. I want to. Uh, I'm curious about you. Do you? Uh, what three teams are you the most excited to watch this year, knowing how this draft has kind of landed? All right. It's fucking freezing in this studio. My hands are cold. Um, based off of the draft, who am I most? Like now that you know, now that you know what teams have done, you know what they've added. You obviously know the Bears. Like, what are the three teams that you're most excited to watch this season? The three teams I'm most excited to watch after the draft. Now, I will say it's going to be f- funny to see the Eagles have a half white secondary. Blankenship <laughs> uh, and Cooper DeGene. I think it's going to be fucking hilarious. <laughs> like. I don't know. I want them to go go out and get Troy Apke out of retirement just to really complete the circle. Uh, maybe there's that corner from the Dolphins they could pick up would be funny. Uh, no, like that's just objectively going to be hilarious. Maybe they can get Harrison Smith run out round out the safeties. Uh, that's going to be funny. I think actually like legitimately though exciting like the Chiefs. The Chiefs. Gonna the Chiefs are going to be fun. Yeah. Because like we knew it was Rushy, who's great. You know, really he's you know he's sneaky fast. If some would say, but. Uh, I think Rushy and Xavier Worthy are going to be a sick duo. Travis Kelsey, obviously, like, like it's going to be fun to watch the Chiefs have another. As much as I don't like them, to have like another fast as fuck deep ball dude. Like they, I mean, the Chiefs. If we're talking about pure supporting cast, like this is obviously the second best supporting cast that he's had outside of Kelsey and Tyreek. But I agree. Since See, Tyreek left, this is the best supporting cast he has. What'd you say? Since Tyreek left, this is the best supporting cast at Mahomes. Oh, easily. Easily. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how it's not the Bears. The Bears are probably the most exciting team to watch this year. Just, like, seeing what they have. Because I think you're also going to set the standard, right? Like, we keep debating this back and forth. It's like these quarterbacks are drafted early on and then have nothing to work with. I think the Bears have another reason to show that, like, we should build the infrastructure first. And the way they did it at first with Mitch Trubisky didn't work out. And now flip the, you know, flip the switch. And now Caleb Williams is born into – arguably the best wide receiver trio of the last, you know, decade, if not the last 20 years in terms of just like playing at the same exact time. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really excited to see the Bears this year. Really excited. Yeah. I, I was going to leave them for last just because it's like kind of a given, right? Yeah. I'm fucking pumped to see the Bears play. So if you could, if I can make this list without the Bears, because I feel like that's like the obvious one. I feel like a team that I would low key, like, like low key, Adam throw in there. It's just the Falcons because I want to see what the fuck happens with Kirk and Penix. What the hell is going to go on with that shit? Because I know Kirk's pissed. Or his camp. Kirk Cousins' camp is angry. I know Kirk's pissed. I mean, we could do want to go into talking about more Michael Penix and, and the Falcons because to me, like, I've had time to, to think about what the Michael Penix, Falcons, Kirk Cousins aspect is. And I said it on Thursday night's episode. Like, if I am Kirk Cousins' agent, it's not that I – because I'm getting $100 million guaranteed, like – I don't care as much, but I would maybe want, I would maybe even want out like at this point. I'd, I'd be a little angry just because it's like obviously they're they're drafting Penix. The Falcons are drafting Penix because they want a security plan with Kirk Cousins in case his Achilles or something comes up. Like you know, if he's not as good after that or he starts to regress as he gets older, you can kind of just let him go, right? But it's like if your Kirk Cousins are like their camp, it's like can you please get me another weapon so I can actually succeed here? If they drafted Romo Dunze. They have Drake London, Romo Dunze, Darnell Mooney, Bijan Robinson, Tyler Algier, Kyle Pitts. Like, they have a squad. They have a fucking squad right there to help Kirk potentially go on the biggest playoff run of his career. Mm. So I'm fucking pissed if I'm Kirk, man, because, like, you just wasted a top 10 pick on a guy that's not going to see the field for the next couple of years. It makes no sense. It's why, well, I was going to say it's why bad franchises stay bad franchises, but they've still gone to a Super Bowl, so technically the they're, Dolphins they're, are the worst they're, franchise. They're a solid solidish ish Wait, Jack, I want to play a game, though. Well, not necessarily a game, but we were talking about this a little bit, and I just brought up wide receiver trios, and I wanted I started making a couple lists um, oh, yeah. to talk about this. Um, I don't know if you want to... Yeah, we'll close out with this, because we've been going for a little bit. Yeah, that one, I want to wrap this up after this one. 
Yeah, yeah. What you got? Uh, so yeah, I, I started thinking to myself like uh, the Bears probably put together the best wide receiver trio of the last decade that can play together at the same time, right? I think it's better than the Bengals with Jamar T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. I, there's just not many trios we that we've seen. Step on the field yet, so we can't say that. We can't say that. I can say that. Yeah. I think I think Keenan Allen, top ten wide receiver, DJ Moore, top twelve wide receiver, Romo Dunze, one of the best prospects this year. Tyler Boyd wasn't those guys. There's nothing wrong with that. Regardless of how they perform, it doesn't matter. So whatever, it got it got me thinking. Like, what if you could put together the best wide receiver trio of all time? So the way I kind of see this is like, let's say you could take Julio Jones, right, in the in the entirety of his career, regardless of how he's played, but he played on the Eagles, so he still counts oh, towards building a trio. Okay. So okay. essentially saying, so we're taking like can in their prime exactly in their prime. Can you build your dream all time wide receiver trio since two thousand, and what that looks like for teams? Does that make sense? Okay, so you're saying you're you're basically saying like, let's see which team since 2000 has the best wide receiver trio of players that have played for the team. Exactly. So talking about their prime, like if I take a like a certain random guy that like a Julio, like you said, Julio's on the Eagles. Yes. Right? Uh, but we're taking Falcons. It's Falcons Julio, but it counts. Exactly. Players. Exactly. Okay. 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 So which team would have the best trio? Exactly. I think the 49ers, dude. I, 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 I'm, that's not even me being biased. I'm okay, biased. so I made a ranking. Like to make it easier, I made rankings, and then I want us to oh, talk so you about made it. the ranking. Okay, okay. Okay, so because I was like saying off the dome, that's what I got. It is. It is. It is. Some of these trios are shockingly disgusting. But my first honorable mention, because we're going to start there. Or bad. Dis- what do you say? Disgusting, good or bad? Disgusting, good or disgusting? Good. Bad. Good. Okay, okay, cool. My first honorable mention has to be the Bengals. Jamar, Chad Ochoseco, and AJ Green. T.O. Oh, my fuck! Yeah, you already fucked it up. God! You would. Yeah, they'd go even higher. All right, all right, I'm going to rip these dude, off. They're, they're on the list. If you, <laughs> dude. If you have those guys, dude, I don't even know if Jamar makes the cut. Yeah, at that I point. It might be AJ. Well, I think Jamar's going to have a better career than AJ Green, so I would take Jamar still. Yeah, probably he's going to, but yeah. Yeah, so there's probably so, people I missed on this list, so you're gonna have to correct me. At ten, I put the yeah, Texans I'll, I'll t- with Andre Johnson, D Hop, and Stefan Diggs right now. Yeah, that's disgusting. That's ridiculous. That's sick. That is a that's crazy sick. trio. I'm trying to think if there's anyone that we forgot of. Like, yeah, I was. I, I'm I sure I miss people. Out of Finnegan, though. Yeah. At number nine, I had the Lions with Megatron, Amaron, Golden Tate. That's above the Texans. Yeah, because uh, I, 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 th- I think it is. Yeah, oh, I disagree, but it's good. Golden Tate, like that's where it falls. Well, Golden Tate like, was a guy. His, good, Golden Tate at his peak was like, yeah, maybe the Texans go over them just because of you have three alphas. But Golden Tate at his peak and Megatron, who he is, Megatron talked about as the arguably the greatest all time. Yeah, I mean, he's that's that's my second goat. But yeah, uh, the Packers at eight: Devontae Adams, Donald Driver, Jordy Nelson. No, dude, uh, Tycho needs to say something. I'm looking at his face. That's eight. That's horrible. That is that is so much worse I than the know. Bengals, the Texans. Yes. Well, I forgot. I forgot the Bengals had to go. So yeah, easily. No, that's still better. That's worse than the Texans. That's worse than the Lions. It is. It is. It is. But the Donald Trump was the lead, bro. Donald Trump was the lead. Donald, Donald, Donald Trump. Okay, Adam. Like, come on. Do better. Next. All right. So you want to flip? So flip the Texans to the Packers. Dude, I'll put the I'll put the Packers off the list and add the the original Bengals one. Mm, nah, Devonta Adams is elite. Jordan Nelson elite. Uh, seven. I uh, seven. So seven. I put Tory Holt, Isaac Bruce, and Cooper Cup with the Rams. Wow, who's above them? Because that's actually disgusting. Uh, at six, I put the Eagles. T. O. Julio and A. B. Oh wait, you know what you. Oh, I'm trying to think like with the AJ. Way you could have put like there's like a couple. Guys. I put I think that's you could put you could put Chris Carter, but I had I put AJ Brown. Uh, for me, I had AJ Brown, To, and Julio on that Eagles team. And that was five. Yeah, dude. No, that's six. What? That's six. That's six. Five was the Cowboys. Was six. Wait, wait, five was the Cowboys. The Cowboys with To, Dez, and CD Lamb. That's not better than the Eagles. Dude. I don't know what A.J. Brown's career is going to look like just yet. Julio, 
out of Julio, T.O., and A.J. Brown. Yeah, but I don't know what, I, I don't know what A.J. Brown is going to be right now. So, A.J. to me, A.J. Brown and C.D. Lamb are very similar. So, you got T.O. and T.O. Yeah, I guess Julio's peak is higher than Dez, now that I think about it. Way higher, way higher. Yeah, yeah, fuck. This list sucks. All right, keep moving on. The Patriots at four. Randy Moss, A.B., and Dolphins legend Wes Welker. Dude, that's actually – I forgot about A.B. That's – Good, good, good trio there, Adam. Good trio. Dad, they compliment each other, bro. They're disgusting. Lost AB and Wes Welker is sick. You know, you could also put like Ocho Cinco could go there if you wanted to. Yes, Ocho could can be there. there. I want. I had the Dolphins as an honorable mention because you had Ocho, Brandon Marshall, and Tyree Kill. No, low key. That's that's good. That's disgusting. Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall slept on, but yeah. All right, at number three, I had the Vikings. Randy Moss, Chris Carter, and Jettis. Sick, sick. I'm I'm debate. Yeah, no, that is that is better than the Patriots. That's fucking nasty. Wait, number two, the Arizona Cardinals. Larry Fitzgerald, Anquan Bolden, and D Hop. Sick too, dude. You got what? Larry Fitz, D Hop, and Anquan Bolden. Hmm. Okay. Lost me a little. What? I thought there was maybe someone better. Bold and sick. I love Ancon Bold, but that's not better than the Vikings, buddy. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Larry Fitz, we're talking about Larry Larry. I'm a 49er. I'm a 49ers fan, Adam. I remember how good Anquan Bolden was for us, but like Well, good, because number one, I put the 49ers, but you reminded me with Randy, but I had Jerry Rice TO and Anquan Bolden. Yeah, replace Anquan Bolden with Randy Moss. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. When the fuck can you when the fuck was that? Uh the first time that we lost the Super Bowl. Yeah, he was wide open in the end zone on the last play. Um, anyway, the the okay, the Cardinals, you had me and then you lost me. You had me and then because two is crazy. When I say this out loud, the list sucks. Oh, it's it's really bad. Yeah. There's some there's some other there's some definitely some people where I was looking through it. But most people have two. The Dolphins okay, should Adam, be up Adam, there. Adam. We forgot about this team. Titans. You ready for this shit? Julio. D hop. D hop. Oh my God, Julio D Hop, Randy Moss is there for a sec. AJ Brown. Yeah, yeah. All right, my whole list is invalid. Okay, if actually, Titans low key could be like number two. My whole list is invalid, and, and I apologize. Julio, Randy Moss and D Hop. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's nasty. That oh my. That might be one. Actually, no, it's not one because the Niners are one. But that that's number two. I'm just like there. Titans oh, should be number two. God damn it. God damn. It. How sick is that? That's Raiders. Wait, Raiders. No. Low key. Devontae. Randy Moss, um, Amari, then Amari, yeah. Like, hmm. I'm literally, I'm just like thinking of teams because Randy Moss played for a few teams for like a sec. You, oh no, Adam, the Raiders might be one. Devonte, Randy Moss, and uh, Jerry Rice. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, my headphones just cut out for that. Jerry, Jerry Rice, Adam, say it. Who is it? It's Jerry. I I just said I'm sure. Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, Devontae Adams, Antonio Brown. Dude. Oh! Oh! My headphones have gone out. I can't even hear you anymore. If Devontae, all I heard was Antonio Devontae. Brown. The Raiders are what? Wait, wait, wait. Redo the list. The Raiders are one. I don't think Devontae Adams even makes the list. Okay. He doesn't even make the trio. Oh my yeah. Well, well are they better? Trio, yeah, Jerry. Oh my god. It's it's Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, and Antonio Brown. Yeah, the list starts there. Oh my god. I don't think AB ever played a regular season game for the Raiders. All right. But he still was on the team. All right. Yeah, the Raiders the Raiders are the best all time trio since two thousand. Wow. That's crazy. Sorry, I was just like, because you got to think. That's fucking nuts. You know what's funny is because when you go down the list of, of players, like when I was making these lists and trying to write down, I wrote down like five players, and I'm looking also at their all-time receiver, receiving leaders, and yeah. some of these guys are just like there for such the, quick, the, the quickest stint, and so you don't have them on this list. And so, yeah, my whole list is invalid. I apologize. That's why, hey, the Raiders, I got you. That was fire. Wow. Jerry Rice was also on the Seahawks if you want to, like, do anything with that. But I don't think they make it. No, nah, but looking back on it, I have to have my Dolphins there. Tyreek Tyree with uh, Brandon Marshall and, and Chad yeah. Ochocinco. Mm. But you, you should have had the Titans and you should have had the Raiders. The Raiders are easily won. Yeah, the Raiders, are easy. the Raiders are easily won. They have won. arguably, like, the three. You could legitimately argue those are the three greatest receivers ever. Yes, I agree with that. 
Mm. Like, I don't think. All right. I want to go. Let, let's wrap this shit up. Yeah. Let's, let's wrap. Uh, how do you want to wrap it? Uh, you want to wrap? I don't want to wrap. No. I can't wrap. No, you don't want to at all. That would have been, that would have been. I can't been... wrap. I can't. I'm not a hippity hop. boy. But, uh, uh we, I do want to talk about this because we had, we did have a hundred, uh, hundred thousand dollar winner, a thousand X winner in better picks. I am very excited to get to the NFL season. I want a competition between you and I of who will get closer at least to being a 1000 X winner. I'll hit a thousand X by, I'll hit a thousand X before the playoffs start. Is that, will that be like a joint operation or are we going to go head to head? No, no, no. I think we could go separate. Yeah. Hitting a thousand X lineup for NFL season. If we put our minds, if we put our minds together, we could hit a, a thousand X. All right. So I'm we excited. Make 100 grand. I'm excited. Congrats, by the way, to Bro Props. Bro Props hit a thousand X lineup. Yeah, That's Bro crazy. Props, that was insane. That is really uh, insane. Yeah, but, I mean, now, you know, for the NBA playoffs, actually, the better raise the limits that you can bet on a thousand or the, they raise the limits for what you can put on a thousand X lineup. Mm -hmm. So it used wow. to be 60. Now you can put a hundred. So you want a hundred grand. It's pretty fucking crazy. That's pretty sweet. Um, and every entry. During the NBA playoffs right now, that's thousand X gets you in a raffle to win Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Yeah. Hey, uh, I, Jack. I, I probably won't go. I'd like to go. Jack, hopefully this is the last time that you and I have to be remote because this sucks. Is it the last time you tell me? No, I don't think so. Yeah, you might be here next week. I might, I might, I might. But yeah, this sucks. Probably. I hate it. Well, that's kind of on you, but yeah, it is definitely on me. But hey, this was uh, this was fun. Sick. This is fun. That was a good time. Take us home, Jack. Take us home, guys. Jack. All right. I'll, uh, I'll, maybe I'll see you this weekend. Hopefully. I don't know. F1? Hopefully. Possibly. I have no idea if you're going to be here for F1 or not. Well, no. Don't think so. Okay. Well, I'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye.